impact of the transborder pests? Uh, what's, what's the impact? Are there any glaring uh, challenges that are within place right now in the uh, eight member countries? Yes, as you know, uh, when we say transborder pests, uh, it is those but that cross the border. Uh, like they said, locusts, uh, collier birds, uh, fall armworms, African armworms. Uh, these are the major ones that we are dealing with now. Uh, if you remember in 2019, 22, up to 2022, there was an outbreak of desert locusts that devastated crops and pasture in the region, uh, impacted on the region's food security and well being of communities. Uh, the region had spent billions of dollars to control it. Uh, and then the aftermath of that is the environmental impact, uh, social impact of the, of the best sites used to control uh, the lesser locus. Uh, other countries in, in the region, like Ethiopia, even Tanzania, Ethiopia, they are also struggling with Korea bed, which is now permanent. Pests. Uh, fall armworms is, is also permanent now in every country of the region. And we are not simply against the, those pests, simply because they are pests. They are impacting on the people's livelihood, destroying crops and pasture. And then, uh, particularly those who are vulnerable, like pastoral communities and subsistence families, are impacted. Uh, more than other other sectors of communities. So that's why we are here. And now these three countries are considered frontline countries when it comes to desert locusts specifically. So they, they came together, uh, they agreed to build on what other regional organizations like De uh, desert locust control organizations doing, FAUS doing, EGAS doing. So that's where we are now. Thank you. You spoke about the locusts that took place in the, in, the, in, the year, in the previous years. Have you assessed the impact that uh, was done maybe uh, and how much maybe you can say that uh, uh, was destroyed in terms of food security and all that? In fact, the impact can be divided into two. One is uh, the crops and pasture destroyed. Those were thousands of, of tons of crop products. Uh, thousands of hectares of pasture and you imagine then uh, how those destruction uh, impacts on the livelihood of those uh, who were dependent on livestock and subsistence farming uh, and after the after the, the outbreak again member cities uh, are struggling the impact of of the best side is used, the, envir the environmental impact particularly. If you look in Ethiopia now, it's reported that 70% of the, of, the, of, of, the, of the bees were, were destroyed at that time, because of, mainly because of the best side is used. 70% of the honey of, the re of that country has been reduced now because of, of the best side is used. How does uh, IGAD come in, in assisting the, 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 the member states, in assisting the individual governments? What we do is just we coordinate the efforts of the member states, bring them together, uh, promote crystal sharing, uh, harmonious regulations, and as you know, uh, as, as I said earlier, transport investors do not have borders, they cross the border. But regulations and policies have borders. So what we did is to, to convince our member states encourage, promote this collaboration so they can share knowledge, they can share information, they can share uh, data, and then they can also share the resources that they have. For example, if a given member state of more pesticides and another country may not have that, so they have to share that one. So that's what we, as you get, that's what we are doing. So is the problem increasing or decreasing? It's decreasing now, but we cannot say it's over. Uh, when it comes to desert locust, Korea bird is increasing. Korea bird is increasing. Uh, mainly climate change, mainly erratic rainfall. Uh, for example, Korea bird it is mainly the irrigation that is now the driving force because water is everywhere when, when, when we are irrigating the farms. Uh, crops are there. So 
Ethiopia, for example, it used to be a receiving country, but now it is one of the breeding countries. So it's climate change mainly. Thank you. A quick one, uh, last one. So uh, my name is Hilary. So we have seen the adverse effects of this pest in the past, and uh, our institutions play a key role in the combating this pest. So so far, what are we doing to strengthen our institutions and also to build capacity so that they can counter this uh, pest uh, effectively when they uh, there's an outbreak? You know, uh, capacity is the most important factor. We are where we are because of our capacity. Uh, so we we have to improve our capacity. We have to enhance our institutional capacity, not only institutional capacity, uh, even individual capacity. Uh, our knowledge, regulations, and how these regulations are uh, enforced. So uh, the technology that we are using, so we need to improve the technologies. We, used to, we need to use drones, uh, satellite data, and other uh, category, uh, facilities and techniques, like artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, so we will be able to predict what's coming uh, more accurately than we are doing now. Uh, so lack of, or let me say limited capacity is one of the most important uh, setbacks that we are dealing with always. And that's why we are just trying to improve uh, the EGAT Secretariat, uh, EGAT Member States, uh, DELCO's capacity, uh, so that means we will be able to work together closely. We will know uh, better than we are we are we know now uh, so when you when you know what when you when you can predict what may come you can take early action so capacity is one of the most important it's not one of the i can say it's the most important factor that we need to improve thank you